The Olympic Games is an event that takes place every four years in various different countries. This year, the Games are being held in the French capital, Paris. They claim to be an inclusive, global event, allowing people of different backgrounds to compete, whilst at the same time allowing the French hosts to ban the hijab for their Muslim female athletes. The opening ceremony was full of satanic references whilst also mocking the Christian faith. Let's now look at a breakdown of the event. What we were engaged in is a type of spiritual warfare that secularism, rationalism and materialism themselves are kind of godless, not even pantheistic or pagan faiths. They attempt, in fact, to obdurate the very principle of the divine. The Olympics is meant to be a ceremony of excellence. Let's look at brilliant athletes from around the world, many of whom are not that well backed or commercialized, even though it's got like basketball teams or soccer teams or you know, well-supported, well-backed athletes. It's also got like judo experts that are toiling away in some small town. It will create great stories. Sport is one of the last meritocracies where you can see true power, true training and real endeavor pitting their wits against one another. But also, extraordinarily now, you can see like devil worship and the extraordinary condemnation of religious liturgy, theology and imagery that's the one thing that can pull us back from the precipice of damnation. Over the years, at least 13 countries have not been allowed to participate in the Olympics for one reason or another. In fact, some of the most famous cases, one being South Africa that was not allowed to participate from 1964 to 1988 because it was labelled an apartheid state. Now this is very telling because the International Court of Justice, the ICJ, Human Rights Watch, Bet Selim and Amnesty International have all unanimously said that Israel is an apartheid state. But what do the French Olympics do? Nothing. Marhaba, welcome Israel. Huh? You're feeling scared? Okay, we'll give our personal protection to you guys. That's what they're doing. This year, Russia and Belarus have been banned because of what's going on in Ukraine. All I can say is they're not committing apartheid, they're not ethnically cleansing them, and there's no international court of justice that has said that it is a plausible genocide. You might choose to be a traditional Christian or a Muslim or a Jew or an atheist or whatever. It's actually no one else's business. What's extraordinary, I suppose, to me appears to be the deliberate evocation of Christian imagery in order to what? Deride it in order to what? Attack it, undermine it, what are the values that are being proposed here? As you can see, there is a correlation between The Last Supper, as Christians see it, and the remake where The Last Supper has been imagined by drag queens. And who amongst them is, according to the Christians, God? Well, God is being shown as a plus-size woman. She's playing according to Christians, God and the Christians, you know what, you know what the Christians are saying on social media? You know what the response of many of the online Christians is? Oh, if this was done about Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Muslims will be up in arms. They would never do this to the Muslims. In fact, if there was an Islamic state under the Islamic state, something like this would be forbidden. But when you look at the secular nature of the West, Nothing is left sacrosanct other than, of course, the LGBT and Zionism. What's behind a spectacle like this is a kind of attempt to derail the sacred and engender a kind of state of nihilism where everything might be regarded as a truth. And before you too quickly dismiss that idea, have you noted in your country, as I have in mine, the odd reversal of positions when it comes to important issues. This party is free, pro-free speech and anti-war. Oh, now this party is anti-free speech and anti-war. What are these peculiar inversions? How was it that when it was the, during the Iraq war period, it was the Republican party that were pro-war, going to war on a lie, 
and during the era that we're currently living in, it's the Democrat Party that are invested in war and going to war, it seems, on, a, on the basis of a series of lies in a series of territories. Have you ever sought to interrogate what that might say about the core principles of those parties? Aren't they looking to create a thin bandwidth of cultural territory within which they can bounce about claiming to be ideologically committed. We really care about these people's rights. We really care about the vulnerable. I don't think they care about the vulnerable. I don't think they're trying to protect the vulnerable. I think what they care about is creating chaos and division and opposition so that they can get on with their real job of coalescing and bringing together various globalist corporate interests, profiteering dominating and generating conflagration and chaos. There is a chapter called Surah Ma'ida in the Quran, which translates as the table, the chapter of the table spread. Yeah, this was when Jesus and his disciples prayed to God for a table filled with food, which some people make the correlation between the Last Supper and that. However, for Muslims, we say, look, there might be some similarities regardless. Yeah, even if it, the stories didn't, you know, correlate with each other, insulting Jesus is unacceptable even to us. It's definitely a pagan image, at least. But to insert a pagan image in Christian theology seems de deliberately provocative. What's being we're being invited to consider there is at the Eucharist, the Last Supper, where Christ says, "Drink my blood, eat my flesh." This is what we do to remember, commemorate me and commemorate my principles. That they've actually depicted Christ as a kind of, as a cadaverous cannibalistic buffet, a kind of Papa Smurf Jesus for the assembled apostles to eat. And not to mention, we don't depict the prophet, peace be upon him, in images and statues. We don't do that. However, when it comes to Jesus, figurines, statues, this, that, you make your bed, you've got a lie in it. And if you water down your religion so much that there's so many different versions of the book that no one knows which one, and you've got theological differences, major theological, you Unitarians, Trinitarians, this, that. However, when it comes to Muslims, it doesn't matter what sect you are, all the sects believe in one God. All of them believe in the Quran. All of them pray. You know what I mean? All of them stand in prayer, bow in prayer, prostrate in prayer. All of them give in charity. All of them saying lying is bad, look after your parents. The fundamentals is not really much to defer on. Furthermore though, I will add that even if there isn't a deliberate attempt to create imagery that is offensive, what there plainly is, is an inertia towards nihilism. Unbelief. Celebration of selfishness. Celebration of selfishness, you don't have to get into conspiracy theories to unpack or understand that. If all that matters is your individual fulfillment and your individual desires, what are you primarily going to magnetize towards? Consuming, fulfilling your needs, your requirements and your desires, watching porn, eating cereals endorsed by the Kelsey brothers, downing sugar and staring at screens. That's how they want you, baby. They want you well done and ill-informed. So those of you that are unfamiliar with Islam, this is a good time for you to look into Islam and see why they wouldn't do this sort of stuff. As Muslims, we should not be supporting or watching such events which are promoting these kind of ideologies. Please like, share and subscribe for more.